Okay, y'all, so for better or for worse, I am going to show you again how to make your notes on PowerPoint and Keynote. This one will be more thorough. Um, so I'm gonna show you what the final product is gonna look like. So this is the slide. And when I play this, uh, play this on the Mac, yes. told me they like white backgrounds better than black so here we are um i'm going to go to document up here and i'm going to actually make it widescreen that's because when i export it as a video i want it to take up the full screen not just the middle chunk of it i am not a fan of these pre-made slides so i always use banks blank slides so i'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that first slide over there um i am going to hold on okay so i opened up a text box by going there oops i did another one all right so my first equation is 5x minus 3y is uh, greater than or equal to, I believe that it was. So I'm going to press option and the greater than symbol to get the equal to under it. And then negative 15. Oh, so negative 5, negative 15. Now this is way too small. So I'm going to go to format. I'm going to go to text. And I'm going to make this as big as I want. So I'm going to go 100. We're going to go 100, okay? I hate this font, Helvetica, whatever. I always do Century Gothic, just a nice clean font. Um, I always outline my font, so I'm going to go ahead and put an outline on here. I'm going to make it a black outline. I'm going to make it three points, and then I'm going to change the color of the text to blue. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so now that I have my font the way that I like, outlined and whatever, I'm going to put a title, Graphing Linear Inequalities. Uh, and I'm gonna put that, oh, let's put it, let's center that. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and then let's just change the color just for the fun of it. All right, so I'm gonna go through this problem step by step, right? The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna subtract five from both sides. So I'm gonna click on my text box, I'm gonna press Control C, copied it, and then I'm gonna paste it again. Um, and then I'm just gonna say minus five X, right? So that's gonna go under here. If I do it on one side, I gotta do it on the other, okay? I'm gonna get a line, I'm gonna move it, I'm gonna stretch it out, I'm gonna make it heavier. Boom, okay, boom, move it where I want it. So the next thing, I'm gonna copy this again, I'm gonna paste it, but I'm gonna change it to what the new equation should be. So the new equation should be negative three Y minus five X. Why, why, why did it do that to me? Minus five X minus 15, okay, great. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide by three, by negative three to be specific, right? So I'm gonna just copy that line that I made. I'm gonna make it shorter. I'm gonna divide here, copy it, paste it. Divide here, copy it, paste it, divide here. And I'm going to take this smaller text box, I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to put a negative 3 under all of those. I'm going to copy that negative 3, paste it here, copy that negative 3, paste that John right here. Okay, uh, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my new equation. Copy, paste. So my new equation is actually going to be uh, just y. Now my symbol flips because I divided by a negative. If you're not a math person, just ignore that right there. So to do that, I press option and less than to get the less than or equal to minus five X over three. And then 15 or negative over negative gives me a positive, sorry. And then negative 15 divided by negative three is actually gonna give me a positive five. Okay, I don't really like the way that fraction is turning out for me. So I'm gonna highlight the five. I'm gonna go over here to settings and I'm gonna make my baseline superscript. I'm gonna highlight my three baseline subscript it's a better looking fraction i could make it better than even better than that but i'm not gonna i want to move all of this over so i'm gonna highlight all of it and move it just so the inequality symbols line up because my kids yeah anyway okay so this is my equation so i'm gonna go to my media and i'm gonna go to choose because i need a graph right so on my desktop i have tpt resources and i have i teach algebra's coordinates so I'm going to choose the one that I like. I like this one. I'm going to insert that junk. Uh, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because I don't want it to take up all my space. And yeah, that looks good right there, right there. So what I know is that when I'm talking up on the board, the first thing that I want to notice is my y-intercept. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a little text box here and I'm going to put y-intercept. I don't like that font still, so I'm going to go and change it. Century Gothic, s'il vous plaît. Uh, and then I want them to notice their slope, which is their rise over run. Rise over run. 
um, very important. And I know when I'm talking on the board that I'm gonna wanna draw even more attention. So I'm gonna want to box that, so this shape. I'm probably doing that too quickly because I'm so used to it. I went to shape and clicked this shape. You can click whatever kind of shape you want to. Um, obviously this is gonna cover that, but I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna go to style. Okay, get out of here, I will be. I'm gonna go to style. Fill, I do not want a fill. I do, however, want a border. So I'm gonna make that a line. Boom, look at your girl. I'm gonna copy that and I am going to make it a little bit bigger for my slope. Okay, okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. I also want to take note of the sign and what the sign means. So I'm gonna get a little arrow here. I'm gonna point to the sign and then I'm gonna copy this, paste it, and the sign tells me that it needs to be a solid line. Um, and it also needs to be shaded under. I'm gonna put shade under. Okay. So now let's talk about graphing. When I am doing the graphing, I want a dot. The first thing is, so I'm gonna go to shape. I'm gonna get a circle. I'm gonna go to arrange, and I'm gonna put. I'm gonna select constrained proportions because I don't want an oval or an ellipse. I want a circle. Okay. And I'm gonna put it at positive five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh -huh. It's a little small, I'll make it a little big. Ooh, just hit my whole screen. Um, so if I wanna inch something over, I select it and then I use the arrows on the keyboard. If I just want it to be super, ooh, look at that, perfectly centered. I also know that I want my other dot to end up five down and three over. Or five up, one, two. Three, four, five up, and three, one, two, three. Um, so I'm gonna copy that, and I'm gonna paste it. I'm actually not gonna put it up here at five over three. I'm just gonna change the color of the dot, and I'll explain why later, and I'm gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna leave it a little bit over, just so it's not hard for me to select. I'll explain that later. Um, I just realized I made a mistake on my last slide, but whatever, <laughs> you get it. Um, I need a line. So this one, I need her look, I need her to be a little bit thicker than that, you know? We like our lines thick, and I need an arrow on both sides. So I'm gonna go like that, and I'm gonna change that color to red because I really want it to stand out. So I know that it's gonna go about there. I'm gonna extend it um, like that. I also know that I'm gonna need to shade under. Um, so I'm gonna need to shade this area. So I'm actually gonna move this out of the way for a second. I'm gonna need to shade this area. This tool I'm about to show you is my life. So you go to shape, you go to this tool right here and it lets you freehand stuff, right? So boom, start there, click there, boom. Click here, boom. Click there, boom. Click there, boom. I want there to be a fill, but I don't want it to be a white. So let's say I want it to be gray, but it's like such a harsh gray, so what if I made the opacity change, okay? So I'm gonna say like that. And I actually don't want it over. Oh, I'm done with the shape. I like it like that, it's good. Let me just click anywhere else, okay. But now, I just, as a personal preference, I'm gonna go to arrange and go to back because I like it like that instead of on top of the grid. I want it under the grid. Okay, we're doing good so far, ladies and gentlemen. So now, the problem is, when I present this, I can't just put all this information up on the board. I just like need it to go step by step. So I'm gonna click on this. So these are the two things that I want on the screen already. So I'm not gonna do anything with them, but I'm gonna go ahead over here and take, this is the first thing that's gonna pop up on the screen, animate. I'm just gonna do appear and appear, okay? So appear just means it pops up on the screen. Nothing fancy happens, okay? Now, if I wanted to, I could do any of these little, oh shoot, I changed it. I want it to appear but I'm gonna give you a preview. So this will be dissolve, drop. I like the drop one. Why is it doing that? Anyway, whatever. Um, I tend to like typewriter also. I also tend to like uh, spin lately. I also like wiping lately. I also like, these ones down here are the special effects. So bouncy, um, there's a shimmer, hey. There is a squish, there's a trace. There's fireworks if I'm feeling fancy. Like, there's a lot, but we're just gonna put it on a pier for now. Okay. Anyway, so after I did this one, I've already done this one. So the next thing that's gonna come up on the screen is this line. Now, Keynote has this line draw tool that I really like, but it's kind of slow. Two seconds is a lot longer than I would like it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put it on one second. I could go from start to finish. I could go from end to start. I could go from the middle. We'll go from the middle. 
This next line, I'm gonna go ahead and do typewriter for that. Um, so it's gonna go like that, I like that. Then I'm gonna divide, so I'm gonna need to, I'm just gonna appear these little lines. Just because the line draw tool takes too long for me sometimes. I am also gonna appear the threes. That's a little tedious to do an effect with something that repeats itself. The next thing I wanna come on the screen is this next level of the equation, right? So I'm gonna typewriter that, and then I want to draw attention to the y-intercept, right? So I am going to make the circle appear by doing the line draw tool, but I'm definitely gonna put it down to like 0.8 seconds. And then y-intercept appear. I definitely want them to know that their slope is what I need to look at next, so I'm gonna line draw, put it down to 0.8 seconds, and then make the words appear. Okay, uh, so the first thing that they want to do is I want their uh, y-intercept to pop up on the screen, so I'm going to make it appear, but then I'm going to add an action to it just so if they didn't notice, I'm going to make it bounce. Hey, I'm here, right? Now I'm going to go and put this point over. When I learned how to do this next thing that I'm about to teach y'all, um, my life changed, okay? So I'm going to slide the green dot over the, the thing and... Ooh, why does it have an effect on it already? Hello. Ooh. I don't know why it has an effect on it already, but I'm going to go ahead and delete effect. Okay. So this dot is going to appear. I'm going to slide the green one on top of this one. This is going to be cool. Okay, guys. <laughs> Bear with me. It's going to appear first. And then I'm going to go to action, and I'm going to add a move effect. So right now it's set to move sideways. I don't want it to move sideways. I actually want it to move five spaces up. Now I don't just want it to move five spaces up. I also want it to move sideways three spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another move to it and it's gonna move three spaces. So slide that over a little bit. And now, oh man, I have my two dots on the screen. Then my line is gonna appear on the screen. But before we talk about our line, I definitely wanna draw attention to the symbol, right? So I'm gonna make I'm going to go back to build in and I'm going to line draw the line, but I'm going to make that like 0.3 seconds and I'm going to have this text appear. Hey, this symbol tells us that we need to do solid shade under. So now the solid line can come up on the screen. I'm going to line draw. I could line draw like that or I could line draw from the middle. We'll leave it from, from start to end because we did one in the middle already here. And then I feel like I probably should show you, be showing you guys, but it's fine, whatever. We're already a bunch of time into this video. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is I want the shading to come on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe because uh, I like that for shading. But I'm going to move it to be down to top. So let's play the slide and see if we got all the information we wanted to get in the right order. Okay, good. This is what I want to be on the screen. Fantastic. Negative 5x, negative 5x. Uh-huh. The line, good. The new equation, good. 5 by negative 3 by, uh-huh. Good. I flipped my symbol. I have a fraction. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Look at my, yes, 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 yes. Bada bing, bada boom, look at us, we did that, okay? Um, a few extras that you don't need to do just to highlight the fact that the sign changed, I'll go to format and change the color maybe. Like, hey guys, I'm, and I can pick this tool. I want it to be bright pink. Let's say I wanted to change multiple things at the same time, I would highlight all of them. Um, and I would change them to, let's say, purple. Okay, purple are the steps of the problem that I'm taking. And that's basically it. Now the time saver is this. Let's say I'm doing four examples like this. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click the slide, I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna duplicate it, right? And my next equation is let's say x minus y is uh, greater than, not greater than or equal to this time, negative five. Ooh, okay, delete. So I would just do negative x, negative x, so I have negative y left, negative x minus 5 left, um, I'm going to divide by negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, and then I'm going to get y, oh, but I got to change the symbol, don't forget that, greater than, so now this symbol is going to turn into a less than, um, this is just going to be 1x. You don't have to write the 1, but hey. Oh, look, you see how I made it superscript? So I'm going to go back and I'm make sure that it's just back in default, 1 over x. And then it's going to be a plus 5 still. This is a little too big for me now. So I'm going to shrink it for this slide. Um, come on, plus 5. We got this, we got that. Slope binder set. I'm not going to change the graph, but you get it. 
Now it's a different problem, but all of it's already animated for me because I duplicated the slide. Ooh, that's a little too far, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that in a, in a second. And yeah, okay, this is obviously wrong because we don't change that, but you get it, you get it, you get it, you get it, I would change it. <laughs> it's a long video, all right, bye.